In today's video, I want to talk about the difference between camera sensor size and why you as an amateur or beginner filmmaker should stick to micro four thirds or crop sensor camera. Now, I don't want to be one of those guys preaching that, oh, budget, 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 be on the budget. No, that's all bull. If you have money, if you have ability to buy full frame sensor, if you can buy Ari Alexa, go buy it and use it. You know, I don't want to advertise the cheap filmmaking. However, hear me out, and this is the big difference and why for amateurs it's better to stick with the micro four thirds. First of all, it's mainly a focus. For example, if you do a lot of filmmaking, if you actually film a lot of people, with a full frame camera, it's especially if we're talking about above 35 millimeter lens, it's very difficult to keep that focus precise. So for example, if you're shooting a movie and your camera constantly moving, if you by yourself, if you're on a budget, if you don't have any kind of focus pooling or anybody to assist you, it's gonna be very difficult for you to keep that pin sharp focus on somebody's eyes. With micro four third sensor, the sensor is much smaller than let's say large 35 millimeter sensor. Therefore, the smaller sensor keeps a little bit deeper depth of the field. Generally, in a filmmaking, you're not supposed to be filming everything at f1.0 or f1.2, whatever, you know? You need to show a little bit of space. And even though I know amateur filmmakers always preaching the fast lenses, this and that, I personally always shoot anywhere between like f2.8 to somewhere around f4, f5. That's my sweet spot. Um, I actually, especially because lens is much sharper at this particular f-stop or t-stop, but that's another story. I'm gonna cover it in a other video. With the crop sensor, it's much easier and faster to actually pinpoint somebody's eye and sort of keep your focus there. The main difference between a crop sensor and the full, uh, let's say, same 35 millimeter sensor. The larger the sensor technically, the more light that sensor can gather. Therefore, for the low light performance, large sensor is better. You need to sort of balance it out which one you can realistically afford. I know there's all those camera tests and all other nonsense people comparing. Realistically though, you before you go and do a purchase, you need to kind of take a look and realize what kind of filmmaking you do. Because I know a lot of people always say, oh, you know, I want full frame, I want, you know, RLX, I want red 8K, a helium sensor, whatnot. Okay, that's all great. But can you actually work with this? Because let's say if you're filming nature and you're by yourself, no problem. If you're filming some action film, a uh, music video, something that's constantly moving, are you gonna be able to keep that focus uh, with a large sensor? If you buy yourself, probably not. I don't want to make this video realistically, you know, the nonsense battle between which sensor is better, this and that. I just want to sort of open your eyes a little bit that when you're making a camera purchase, when you're making that decision, you need to sort of weight your chances and your abilities. What can you realistically work with? Because if you're spending, let's say, your last money to buy a camera or a lens, does that mean that's it, it's a final purchase? Not really. So don't buy something that later you're going to be stuck with and not being able to use because I know a lot of people that buy full frame camera sensors or cameras and they can't really work by themselves. So what happens? They end up doing all those kitchen tests for the next several years all day long, you know, testing the sensor. Point is, you buy a camera, you go and you shoot. You don't just stick in the kitchen like many filmmakers do, you know. So. Crop sensor, it's great for beginner filmmakers, not even necessarily even amateurs, just beginner filmmakers that don't have large crew, that don't have ability to have a dedicated focus puller or something like that. Um, larger sensor, of course, it's a little bit better quality, you know, you get more shallow depth of field, it's beautiful. Um, but you need to realize that with a larger sensor, you actually need to have some kind of help because otherwise, if you run and gun type of a guy, large sensor may not necessarily be a best option for you so leave me comments below guys what do you think and i will see you in the following video